your caloric intake was limited to one meal on the weekend and maybe a little snack during the week on Wednesday. You'd be way skinnier than me. You'd still be taller, but you'd be skinnier than me. You see, God is calling us in this great encounter with him to have a steady diet of him. And I want to address uh, two false assumptions that people have, that the Reveal survey has, has unfolded this for their understanding. This is really important. I want you to hear me out here, okay? The first false assumption is spiritual maturity is dependent on how long you have been a follower of Christ. Okay, so if you've been a Christian for 20 years, you are way more spiritual than someone who's been a Christian for maybe two months. The reality is, is that person may get radically confronted by the Holy Spirit, and that person may become fully engaged in their love of God, and they have a passionate love for others that they're living out the two greatest commandments that Jesus said, and they're way more mature than you are, and you've been a Christian for 20 years. You've been a Christian for 20 years, and there's no passion. There's no excitement in your life. You show up at church, you go through the routine, and your life has, actually, actually, has absolutely no impact on other people for the kingdom. You see, that's what the committed may be, is they're sitting in the pews, but they're making absolutely no impact on the world, and they're not growing passionately in their love for God because they're not having a steady diet of encountering God. The second thing, this is a second assumption, and this is really important, okay? And I'm not saying this to get the pressure off of my back. <laughs> The second thing is many people believe that the church, the organized church, your church, is responsible for your spiritual growth. So if you are stagnant spiritually and you're not growing, you're ticked off at the church because they're not feeding you. The reality is, is when we feed ourselves through having consistent encounters with God. When we go to church, God continues to feed us and nurture us, and we continue to grow exponentially. But we cannot grow on one meal a week. Does that make sense? So, friends, we have to learn to be self-feeders, every one of us, no matter how old or young you are. We've got to learn to do this. It's imperative. It can only happen by having a steady diet of daily devotions. I know that many people go, you know, isn't that kind of religious that you daily have to? You have to find that time. Otherwise, the world will just choke God's heart out of you. Now, it's interesting. We, we developed a team when we're, we're developing a team of people that want to write daily devotionals that you can incorporate daily, because they're daily devotionals, in your spiritual life. And when you leave here, if you're interested in this, the, on the information booth, there are stacks of these devotionals that were written for you. And these different writers will each week write a different devotional for you that will be based on the coming weekend's sermon. So, this week, you pick up the devotional when you leave, starting on Monday, Monday through Friday, you have a devotional that is geared towards Acts 2 that I will be talking about next week on how we encounter others. This is something that helps us to be chewing on the Word daily, every week, and that helps the Word to grow and deepen in our hearts. That helps it to take root in our hearts we need prayer and meditation. This is conversing with God on a regular basis. You know, what I do is, is I have an electronic journal that I've been using, and I get my laptop, and I go to a coffee shop or somewhere private, like Colorado Legacy. It's a wonderful coffee, right, Dan? <laughs> and I, I have a quiet time, and I journal. 
in there, and it's, it's a great way for me to get my, my heart and, and my, my thoughts and my feelings out of me onto the computer as I'm praying through God. You know, this works for me because I, that's how I think and how I learn, is I'm a tactile learner. And so when I do it, I learn it. And so when I pray by journaling, it helps that prayer to really become expressed and in, in, in from in here out to God. Now, we wrote these, we made these journals that we handed out to the volunteers, and I think they're still in the bookstore that you can get one of these. And, and I also carry this with me everywhere I go with my Bible. And so if I don't have my computer, I get this out, and I can write in here, and I can take notes. Like, you could have one of these right now, and you could be taking notes of the pastor's sermon. <laughs> and then you go home, and you review your notes. It's a novel idea, isn't it? I encourage you guys to be practicing this on a regular basis. Every time I hear someone else preach, I take notes because I can learn from anyone because God speaks through them, right? And then after the sermon, I go and I review the sermon and I review the scriptures. It's really an important discipline. Now, I want you to know that this E3 process, encountering God, encountering, encountering, see, you already got it. This is a commitment that we have no matter what age the people are in our church. It starts with the nursery, it goes through the children, it goes to the youth, and it goes to old codgers like me. Can you say codger in church? Okay. So anyway, I wanted you guys to hear the passion in the heart of DJ, our youth pastor. That I had an interview with DJ this week where you can hear the passion of the youth group of how they want to help the youth in our community to encounter God, to encounter others, and how to encounter the world. Let's watch the screen. Hey, DJ, thanks for being here to Absolutely. share with everyone this, uh, for this weekend. Yep. And uh, how long have you been on staff here working with the youth? Um, three years. For three years? This month. Yeah. And I'm just curious, what is your passion? What, what is your heart? for the youth in the Grand Valley? Well, we want to see every single student, as many students as possible, get to know God in a, in a real and personal way. And my, I guess my passion specifically is to help each student individually get to know who God is in a way that isn't their parents' faith, but is a faith that's real that then can be expressed in action. So that's your vision of how we want to help kids to encounter God in their lives personally. Yeah, yeah, we, we want to do that. And so, do you have any, like, particular changes or strategies that <laughs> you're going to incorporate this fall to the, be able that, to do that? Is that a loaded question, Kirk? <laughs> 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 yes, absolutely. We, um, we, we want to do as much as we can to engage students. And one of the ways that we can engage students is is through services and so on Wednesday nights we have incredible services both middle school and high school that really target um, students to bring their friends and just bring and gather as many students as possible so that's kind of a Wednesday is uh, the focus of outreach of bringing absolutely unchurched kids in where they yeah. can be able to or have the opportunity to encounter God in their lives. Exactly. I mean, this, this last week we had five new students. Um, we had one kid in particular, never been to church. He came about halfway through the service and I just grabbed him afterwards. I, you know, what, what did you think? And, and he said, I loved it. That's I didn't know church could be like this. I'm going to come back. That's great. Yeah, it was awesome. That's great. And that's our goal on Wednesday night. Okay. And, and then with that, this is the loaded part of the question, I think, <laughs> <laughs> is we really also want to help teenagers on the weekends and, um, encounter God. And, and so we're kind of, we're going to make some changes, not go completely back to where the deepening was, but do a couple things that will target our middle schoolers and high schoolers to help them really engage with who God is. And when would that begin that you're going to do that? Well, it's going to begin October 4th and 5th. That's my birthday. 
<laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> that wasn't scripted. <laughs> That's off the record. Yeah, sure. And uh, yeah, October fourth and fifth, we're gonna we're gonna do a middle school program, and and then a high school program. We're gonna separate them, and we're gonna tailor what we're doing uniquely to each of those groups. That's great. We're so excited about it. And so that will be what you will be utilizing on the, on the weekends to help kids to encounter God in a deeper way. Exactly. Well, that's great. Yeah, and and with that, um, just because I'm so excited about it, for high schoolers, we're going to start something called the Forum, where they're actually going to have a chance to engage with questions that are relevant and important to them. It'd be interactive. Absolutely. Okay, great. Yeah, it's it's going to be a discussion forum where people get to wrestle through. There's no bad question like how, who is this God how mm-hmm. do we meet him how do we connect with him that's great and then for middle schoolers um, we're gonna have an engaging service where they get up get to play a game together and just enjoy each other and and then there will be um, kind of a clincher uh, a message that really helps them understand who God is in a more practical way and would there be worship for them no, actually, um, we're gonna have the middle schoolers come to the main service and then when we and the high schoolers in the main service yeah and then break after the worship like the children do right that yeah. sounds great yeah well so, thanks dj we're bet. we're really excited for thanks. this coming year yeah. and seeing hundreds of kids being able to encounter god in a, in a deeper and more powerful way absolutely so thanks for all yeah. you're doing for the youth sure. here and god bless you and your thanks. Every thanks. students bring your friends <laughs> all right all right <laughs>you notice in that video how long DJ's legs were? (laughs) He's sitting there, his knees are hanging up. We had the coffee table sitting in front so you couldn't see that my feet weren't even touching the ground. (laughs) DJ and Vanessa, would you stand up so everyone could see you? And I wanted them to stand up so if any of you have any youth or know any youth that uh, you have any questions, you can go to them. All right? Now, one thing I've experienced in my life over and over again is that unless I'm in intentional uh, efforts are put in in my spiritual journey, my heart becomes cold, hard, and brittle. And it doesn't take long. And life just gets drained out of me because life is tough, isn't it? And one of the things that I love hearing is what John Wimber said, the founder of the vineyard. He says, I need to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit because I leak. <laughs> you know, there's just holes in, our, in us, and, and that's how it is in spiritual formation and my own discipleship process is I got to continue to allow God to touch me through spending time with him alone and personally. Now, if you heard what I was saying about that continuum of of where we are in the discipleship process, if you are an explorer, if you are beginning to ask questions or have been asking questions about who Jesus is and what this church is and, and what is this Christianity thing, or if you are a new believer but you still have tons of questions and don't fully understand everything, I can't recommend enough than for you to consider taking the Alpha course that starts this Wednesday night in the chapel at 6.30. It is a program that will help you to ask those questions you've always wanted to, be at, wanted to ask for people to honor and to respect those questions and for the group to help you to connect the dots. No matter where you are in that continuum, whether you're an explorer, a, a new believer or committed or a Christ follower, if you need help with your daily devotions, consider picking up the devotions as you leave here. The other thing is, if you're a computer type of person, those devotions are on our website starting tomorrow. And you can go into the website every day and go to that daily devotional. What, what if you're dealing with an addiction 
or you're in a relationship with someone who's dealing with an addiction. Because what happens when addictions are in our life, it becomes the huge elephant that takes over everything. And so if that's what you're dealing with, that addiction hinders you or your relationship with someone that has an addiction, it hinders you from growing closer to God. And so one of the things that I have seen that has had incredible impact on people's lives to free them so that they can encounter God is Celebrate Recovery. That I would encourage you to consider going to, to the Celebrate Recovery program on Tuesday nights to find that freedom in Christ so that you can encounter God in a greater way. Some of us, the reality is, for those of us that are married or in a serious relationship, there's conflict continually between you and your spouse or your partner. And these conflicts become something that clouds everything. It's, it's so consuming in your life that you don't even think about encountering God. And I just want you to know that the marriage course are to join Jane and I at the marriage retreat coming up October 3rd through 5th on my birthday. <laughs> and maybe, just maybe, God will touch your marriage and bring healing between you and your spouse and your partner so that you can be freed up to have the joy of encountering God on a daily basis. You see, these are just a few of the programs that we have and examples that I can give to you to help you to make that next step to encounter God. We've got to spend time in the Word. We've got to spend time praying and hanging out with God. We've got to get free so we can encounter Him in a greater way. These are just a few of the programs, but our chief aim, our primary purpose, our highest calling in life is to personally encounter God on a regular basis. And the worship team, please come forward. I'm inviting every one of us to join us on this epic journey. You know, the, one of the things that churches can do is churches can be so caught up in doing church that people in church can be so caught up in doing things to help their church to grow that we lose sight of our first and highest aim, which is to encounter God. And the reality is, is nothing else matters until we do that first and foremost. And so let's stand as we encounter God through worship. And I'm gonna have the ministry team come forward and one of the things that I think is a great move of us on our part to make that movement, to make the next step, is for those of us that are dry spiritually, for those of us that maybe are stuck and we're not moving forward in our connection with encountering God, man, I'm just going to invite you to come forward and to get prayer that God would release this in you, that he would release this great encounter so that you can experience this awesome, incredible God in a deeper way every day of your life through eternity.